Dear learners, I welcome to this course Fundamentals of Compressible Flow Module 6 Supersonic Nozzles and Diffusers. So, the prior to this uh, lecture, we have discussed about the isentropic uh, nozzle flow and when the flow is supersonic and also we discussed about uh, isentropic nozzle flow when the flow is subsonic. And in all these cases, we say that it is a completely shock free because the thermodynamic process is isentropic in nature. Today, we will relax this uh, isentropic uh, conditions and try to say that it is only a adiabatic flow. Now, when we have a adiabatic flow, there will be some instances the shock waves can form inside the nozzle. Now, if at all it has to be formed, where it is going to be formed? And in fact, we will in our analysis we will say that it will be uh, only occurring in the divergence portion of the nozzle. So, in this particular lectures, we will try to elaborate the shock formations in the nozzle and if at all the shock formation in the nozzle happens, then what are the different conditions of pressure we should maintain. So, all these things we will discuss and based on the, uh, uh, the expansion in the nozzle, uh, uh, there are some situations we call this nozzle to be over expanded nozzle and some situation we call this nozzle to be uh, under expanded nozzles. And in all these cases, we will see that how a normal shock first develops, then slowly it dies down as an uh, oblique shocks and, and, and finally, it becomes a, a expansion waves if the pressure difference is very large. So, all these things uh, we will uh, cover in this particular lecture. So, before you start this, I will give some brief introductions whatever we have studied. We have studied oblique shocks, we have studied expansion waves and we have studied normal shock, the attached shock, detached shock, curved shock, bow shock. So, uh, to summarize these particular things, we have uh, discussed the theory of uh, expansion waves that is frankel mayer expansion waves. We have discussed the theory of uh, oblique shocks in the form of theta beta m relations. Based on that, we discussed about flow past wedges and cones, blunt bodies, shock expansion theory, shock uh, polar and pressure deflection diagram. It is one of the method of graphical representation of oblique shocks. We also discussed about regular reflections of oblique shocks, interactions of oblique shocks, MAC reflections and of course, we introduced a terms called as important terms called as solid boundary, free boundary and concept of slip lines. The idea behind putting these things although, although we have a exhaustively discussed that some of these features are very particular in uh, with respect to today's analysis. Now, when there is a uh, normal shock formation or oblique shock formations. In fact, at the exit of the nozzle, these oblique shocks or expansion waves try to form and uh, when they come out, the flow com comes out from the nozzle, there are possibilities that these oblique shocks and expansion waves interact with the pressure boundary or, some, or we call this as a free boundary. And because of these reasons, a slip lines are introduced there are uh, across which the pressure is equalized and the direction of the flow directions becomes flow will have same directions. So, these are the concepts are very vital in the analysis of uh, interactions and of public shocks and expansion waves and mostly which this happens at the exit of the nozzle. We will try to see some situations where such effects are very predominant and under what conditions these situations are relevant. Just to give the background that when we talked about isentropic flow through nozzle, we say that the it is flow is completely isentropic, either it can be a subsonic flow or it can be supersonic flow. And in a subsonic flow, there are uh, infinite number of solutions and in a supersonic flow, there is only one unique solution. To summarize our study in our last discussion, uh, the following points may be remembered that 
the subsonic flow in a convergent divergent nozzle is entirely governed by the pressure ratio between the exit and the inlet of the passage. The flow is mostly subsonic and there are infinite number of isentropic solutions. The flow need not be sonic at the throat because this is one of the things it may or may not be sonic or it is not flow is not always sonic at the throat even though the it encounters the minimum area of the passage and it will be only sonic when a particular pressure ratio is maintained. We will see what is that pressure ratio. Uh, now, when the flow becomes sonic, the mass flow rate uh, uh, is choked. So, we will say we will use its choked mass flow rate conditions and that point of time we say that throat will be the considered as the minimum area. When the flow is not sonic, the throat area cannot be called as a minimum area locations. Although throat area will be considered as a minimum area, but the flow will not be choked even though it is a minimum area location. And in that case, when the flow is not choked and if you want to calculate mass flow rate of the nozzle, then this it can be done through simply continuity equations. Now, when the exact pressure difference is maintained, the final Mach number will be fixed by the area ratio between the exit and the throat of the nozzle and this is the only one possible supersonic solutions at the exit. Now, and for a supersonic flow to happen, the flow must choke that is the uh, only one condition the flow must choke at the throat and that condition is obtained through choked mass flow rate calculations which you have we have already discussed in our last class. So, this is how the we, we put the summary of our analysis if you have a we have a nozzle uh, and it is uh, it is a convergent divergent nozzle. So, in a convergent passage and this area is a function of x direction that means area is only a function of only x directions and means at one particular cross sections the all the flow properties remain same. So, this is the basic philosophy of quasi one dimensional analysis. Now, when the flow is subsonic we will see we have seen that there are many possible Mach numbers that we can have at the exit like M E 1, M E 2 and M E 3 and in one particular situation for M E 3 case although the Mach number is uh, subsonic at the exit we can see that the flow is choked that means the sonic flow is encountered at this minimum area and that happens when a, a particular pressure ratio condition is maintained that, that is exit pressure to total pressure ratio becomes 0 0.5 to 8. So, that means for M E 3 Mach number at the exit we gave we have a pressure ratio P E 3 exit pressure ratio uh, P E 3 and in this case what we see all the for all the pressures you can say the flow is entirely subsonic irrespective of location any location you choose in this nozzle in the convergent divergent nozzle. So, flow is completely super, uh, sorry subsonic. Now, another extreme situation that if you follow this particular area Mach number relations and uh, fix a Mach number supersonic Mach number these things and choose a nozzle. So, Mach number gets fixed uh, for this particular area ratio. Now, to get this Mach number we must maintain a unique pressure that pressure is also uh, has to be we call this as a exit pressure P e and that at that exit pressure we will have one supersonic uh, solutions. So, what we can see is that in this situation the flow initially starts with subsonic region in the convergent uh, portion and becomes sonic at the throat and continuously the Mach number further increases till it equalizes the final Mach number based on the area ratio. And this final Mach number we call this as exit Mach number this is decided by this extreme value. So, we say it is a M E and for this Mach number to obtain at the exit the pressure ratio uh, we have to put call as a P E and this P E by P naught ratio will follows this isentropic relations and side by side temperature relations are also maintained. So, 
what we have seen is that we are now in a situation that subsonic flow and, and all these cases we say that the nozzle is completely shock free and because first thing it is isentropic, second thing the issue of shock formation in the subsonic flow does not arise and issue of uh, shock formation in supersonic flow can arise, but we have assumed the flow to be isentropic. Now, if you relax this condition to be isentropic and try to play with a pressure which is in the range of P E 3 less than exit pressure P and uh, less than P E. So, P E refers to supersonic value which is fixed by this relation and P E 3 refers to the Mach number M E 3 and this is a subsonic solution. So, what we have seen is any value of P greater than or P E 3 is less than P. So, the flow is completely subsonic and any value of P which is less than exit pressure that is with respect to this Mach number the flow is completely supersonic. Now, we have to see that if you maintain this particular inequality P E 3 less than P less than P E what are the conditions that we are going to achieve. So, in that to, to do that analysis we have to relax this uh, restrictions that uh, let us relax this restriction of isentropic flow. So, that is the reason our adiabatic nature of nozzle flow comes into picture at least we can say there is no heat transfer. So, flow is adiabatic. So, in some sub situation if you want to analyze then what are the uh, consequence that we are going to get it. So, the isentropic analysis is relaxed towards the adiabatic case for which there may be formation of shocks because shock wave formation can happen and when the flow is adiabatic in nature uh, and this shock for formation happens in the divergent section of the nozzle because since it is a nozzle flow, flow is continuously increasing and uh, at most it can achieve a Mach number 1 at the throat. So, the issue of shock formation in the converging portion does not arise. So, if at all the shock wave has to form, it can form only in the diverging section. And if uh, in the limiting case when the flow is sonic and if it does not see the adequate pressure difference, then the flow will be completely uh, subsonic. If it sees adequate pressure difference, the flow will try to expand but how long it can expand that it depends on the uh, pressure that you are controlling at the downstream. So, this is this concept we, we, we now introduced we call this pressure as a back pressure. So, a term back pressure is introduced here which is controlled in at the downstream of the nozzle exist through some independent mechanisms that means, we can reduce regulate the pressure increase or decrease. So, that we can regulate the flow which is occurring in this nozzle, but uh, we are not touching the upstream side pressure or we reservoir pressure and it is till a stagnation pressure. So, in this situation the flow expands from a uh, reservoir to a controlled pressure conditions in a converging diverging nozzle. Uh, the shock waves and expansion waves can incident on a free boundary and reflect as a compression or expansion waves after the interactions. So, what may happen is that if at all we can say that shock formation starts from this throat and this shock waves keeps moving in the downstream. So, this normal shock can keep moving in the downstream and what particular instant it will stand at the exit. Now, if you control this back pressure in such a way that this normal shock will come as becomes an strength of this normal shock reduces it becomes an oblique shock and this oblique shock comes from the exit because these things it sees a kind of a compression corner and this oblique shock comes and in, in interact and finally, they interact and it finally, it goes as a interaction shocks and and one point of time it interacts with the free boundary. So, it becomes expansion wave forms. 
these expansion waves forms and comes meets and they merge as a again oblique shocks. So, such situation keeps on happening. So, the sequence of events that normal shock starts and keeps on moving and how it, why it is moving because we are regulating this pressure through this back pressure mechanism P B or we are controlling this pressure P B. And uh, uh, this process will happen as I mean we mentioned earlier that the compression waves and expansion waves can incident on a free boundary and they rep can reflect as a compression or expansion wave after interactions. And through this process uh, we have developed a theory which is uh, which is termed through a which is named as a slip line and, and across this slip line two conditions are satisfied that is pressures must be same and velocity must be in the same direction Mag or magnitude can differ. Now, uh, let me start the normal shock formation in the nozzle. So, what we have uh, now uh, going to tell that the flow is not isentropic because we have said it is in adiabatic in nature we have relaxed the isentropic conditions. Now, under what conditions the shock can form and if at all the shock has to form it has to start from the at the minimum area that is throat. That means, when we are taking a conditions at which the sonic flow is achieved at the throat and when the sonic flow is achieved at the throat it is likely there will be a normal shock and in this case it will be a normal shock and this shock formation can happen and this shock will keep on moving. So, to have these conditions we are now regulating this pressure in such a way that the exit pressure is denoted as P E 4 which is higher than the P E. P E stands for the value of pressure uh, corresponding to a supersonic solution and this P E 4 is less than P E 3. So, when this happens we can have normal shock at some location in the downstream situations. So, what we have seen here is that if you look at this particular picture that is Mach number versus x, x is nothing but we can simply say it is area of uh, area at that location. So, the Mach number keeps on increasing the flow is sonic and this sonic nature of the flow is achieved at the throat and after that the sonic flow sees a adequate pressure. So, at the downstream. So, it, it is further it further tries to expand further, but all of a sudden uh, it says that I cannot expand further. Had this be pressure be in P e exit pressure with respect to supersonic value, then the curve would have extended in this fashion that means, Mach number was will further increase. But it sees that I cannot expand further, flow cannot expand further because I did not see the adequate pressure. So, a normal shock is formed. When the normal shock is formed, the Mach number immediately after the normal shock becomes subsonic and, uh, and again the subsonic flow sees a diverging passage. So, the Mach number further drops and similarly with respect to uh, this pressure value. So, at this point uh, where the at the throat had this pressure, uh, this pressure ratio is maintained as 0.528 for, for which the flow is sonic and after that had this uh, pressure ratio would have maintained for a supersonic value, the curve would have continuously shown as a dotted line. So, it is a supersonic solution and this supersonic isentropic solution would have taken this shape, but unfortunately what it says that the flow cannot expand further because of this normal shock the press there is a rise in the pressure P 4 and the had the process was be completely uh, uh, isentropic subsonic nature. So, this pressure would have P E 3. Now, it has becomes uh, uh, P E 4 by uh, P naught because this option because there is a rise in the pressure access the no, across the normal shock. So, that means, the sonic flow at the throat expands in the diverging section attains a supersonic value till some location in the downstream but the supersonic flow could not proceed further because the pressure is not sufficient enough to drive the flow further. 
Hence, the normal shock is formed in the diverging sp uh, portion that would adjust the flow properties to map its value at desired uh, value of pressure P E 4 and M E Mach number M E 4. And the flow behind the normal shock is becomes subsonic, so that Mach number decreases towards the exit, so while static pressure increases to P E 4. Uh, and one particular point of time, if the if we have you can regulate this pressure such a way that normal shock can stand at the exit. So, that means if you extend that curve, curve further that means the normal shock can stand at the exit, but once it normal shock stands at the exit the after the exit the flow become again a, a subsonic. So, this this particular value that means, initially had this been a process been a completely supersonic solution, you would have landed a value P E 6 and because there is a normal shock at the exit, the pressure bec becomes suddenly rise, pressure rises further. So, it becomes P E 5 and this is the case where we say uh, that precisely it will the normal shock will stand at the exit. Uh, for which P 5 is equal to P e and static pressure behind the normal shock is exactly equal to the design Mach number of the nozzle. So, what we can see is that and within the nozzle the flow is completely supersonic, but it is not shock free that is just normal shock at the exit. So, it is not an isentropic solution, but uh, entire isentropic solution that happens uh, within the nozzle, but there is a uh, across the shock the isentropic nature is not there. So, the, that means, we say that nozzle is not shock free. So, ideally when you design a nozzle we have to maintain a pressure ratio such that we have to keep this uh, 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 nozzle to be a shock free environment. So, as to minimize the loss and uh, in fact this is the basic this is the very basic beginning or sequence of event that normally is encountered in a nozzle to achieve supersonic flow. And without the shock formation we cannot really think about getting a supersonic flow in the nozzle. Now, once we now we have reached a situation that the normal shock stands at the exit. Now, what happens after that? What we are what pressure now after that if you can regulate our pressure what is going to happen? And this normal shock becomes weaker and weaker. Now, how to how you are regulating pressure? So, we say that when the normal shock stands at the exit, nozzle is not shock free although design Mach number is achieved, but after this point the flow is no longer governed through exit pressure, but it is controlled through back pressure. Now, when the back pressure is reduced further that means, P B is greater than P E 6, but it is less than P E 5, then what can happen? The strength of the normal shock is reduced so, it becomes weaker. So, the pressure increases to back pressure across an oblique shock attached to the nozzle. So, now that means, when we are uh, when we are uh, this oblique shock forms at the exit just to map the uh, pressure conditions which is within this nozzle and after the after the oblique shock. So, after the oblique shock there is a pressure which we call this as back pressure and uh, this exit pressure is governed to the, the uh, your reservoir. So, to map this the strength of the oblique shock is decided. So, the uh, so in, that in such case uh, the pressure increases to back pressure across an oblique shock attached to the nozzle. So, new exit pressure P 6 is attained for which P 6 is less than P B is less than P 5. So, this pressure at the exit is expanded below the back pressure the nozzle is said to be over expanded nozzle. Here the flow inside the nozzle is fully isentropic with supersonic back number for which is designed. That means, we are at least say that nozzle is completely shock free although there is a, 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 a there can be a oblique shock at the exit, but still this 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 design is not perfect, but we can improve this design. To do that what we can ok, when you say it is a over expanded nozzle we can uh, recall our previous attention where we discussed about few general inferences 
uh, with respect to wave reflection from free boundary. So, that means wave incident on a solid boundary in a reflect in like manner that is compression waves reflect as a compression waves and expansion waves reflect as a expansion waves. So, as long as it is within the solid boundary the first law or first rule is applied, but in our case it is the case of second rule. Second rule says that the waves incident on a free boundary reflect in a opposite manner that is compression waves reflect as a expansion and expansion waves reflect as a compression. Exactly this is what is happens in which we get a diamond flow pattern at the exhaust jet. And what I am trying to say is that at the exit nozzle exit boundary, we can say this is a free boundary or a constant pressure boundary and this constant pressure boundary can be treated as a slip line across which the, uh, the pressure must match that means across this slip line the pressure must match first thing. Second thing direction of the flow must be same that means flow direction here and here should be same here and here should be same although the magnitude may differ. So, what we can say here the first oblique shock comes and first set of oblique shock comes from the exit they interact. So, again they return as a oblique shock, but when they meet the free boundary they uh, comes as a uh, expansion waves when these expansion waves comes and interacts they again merges an oblique shock and these oblique shock again goes and interacts with the slip line or free boundary and finally, uh, this process keeps on happening over a sufficient length in the downstream and till, till we have we have landed with a completely shock free environment uh, which across this slip, slip line shock or expansion wave uh, uh, process across this slip line. So, this is a very uh, ideal picture what we call it as a diamond shaped pattern of the flow through the exhaust jet and it is a very classical event. Okay. So, uh, we have not stopped our analysis yet. So, we have stopped our saying that um, we have seen that oblique shock formation can happen, but is next question is that is our nozzle completely is a, is a very perfect nozzle or not, but still we can say that we can improve further again another uh, situation that can happen we can say that expansion wave can happen. So, we said last time we said that there will be exit uh, at the exit we will have uh, oblique shocks. Now, we want to make this oblique shock further weaker, weaker and weaker to do that we have to reduce the back pressure still further. So, when we reduce the back pressure still further P B is less than uh, P E C that means, this is the op extreme situations that if you keep on doing this entire uh, event what will see flow coming out of this nozzle will be completely isentropic or shock free. And when you say exp expansion uh, waves at the exit obviously, expansion waves are treated as a isentropic in nature. So, nozzle will be uh, the flow inside the nozzle will be completely isentropic and a such a nozzle is to be called is called as under expanded because the flow is capable of additional expansion after the no leaving the nozzle. But the what we can say when you say uh, when you say is a perfect nozzle this perfect nozzle uh, is for this perfect nozzle we need to have this Mach number which is a function of area ratio and also a function of pressure ratio. Okay. But what we have done here we have reduced the pressure to a such value such a value that the flow is capable of doing further expansion, but we cannot do because your area ratio does not allow because this one particular area ratio will give a Mach number. So, uh, in the beginning uh, we said that this is the controlling nature that whatever you do your area ratio will not allow you to uh, expand further even though you have maintained very low pressure ratio that is exit or back pressure to this reservoir pressure. So, that is the reason we say we call this nozzle is said to be a under expanded nozzle. 
So, the complete sequence of events for adiabatic nozzle flow can be explained here normal shock formation this normal shock keeps on moving at one particular instant the normal shock stands at the exit and if you reduce this back pressure further the normal shock becomes further weaker it becomes an oblique shock and in this oblique shock interaction happens at the exit and finally if you reduce the back pressure very much below we can say is a is a completely uh, we can say expansion wave formation at the exit and nozzle is completely shock free okay so this is how we call the adiabatic nozzle flow and uh, as i mentioned the uh, use of a convergent divergent nozzle for a subsonic flow is no longer no longer is used use, use in the practice and although we can we use this nozzle for supersonic flow which has to be isentropic that is also highly unrealistic so only possibilities that we can achieve a supersonic flow in a convergent divergent nozzle is through the control of this back pressure mechanism so to the starting process of the nozzle we should start the shock formation at the throat normal shock formation at the throat and slowly this normal shock has to be pushed out of this nozzle by just by regulating the back pressure so first instant it is at one location and second instant it becomes uh, it lo it location changed to the exit in the third uh, situation the the normal shock becomes weaker and weaker it becomes oblique in nature and in final situations this oblique oblique shock becomes expansion waves so although because here we have not assumed any isentropic nature we have uh, we have made this nozzle to be completely shock free only by regulating this back pressure so in this through this mechanism we have said that in this when you are maintaining a pressure conditions with respect to under expanded nozzle this nozzle is completely shock free although it is not isentropic we have not assumed any isentropic here but nozzle is completely shock free so this particular case we call is as a perfect nozzle and this is achieved for all practical utilities or purposes and we will see this utility in the subsequent class and my final remark could be the complete sequence of flow inside the nozzle a quasi dimensional consideration allows the analysis of uh, cross sectional average properties inside the nozzle for a given space shape ideally a contoured shape and design ensures contoured shape means this particular things area is a function of ax so instead of a straight line we can say it's a contoured shape so uh, this particular design ensures a shock free isentropic flow inside the uh, and it is a supersonic nozzle now we'll try to solve some numerical problems based on the study what we have done so far see the first question it is said that a converging diverging nozzle is to be operated for the design mach number of 2.5 and the nozzle supply pressure is 20 bar so we have to uh, find out using quasi one dimensional theory to what is the back pressure required to choke the nozzle so to choke the nozzle means we have to recall that a situation which minimum pressure ratio to choke the nozzle is pe3 by p0 so if you recall our previous study that initially the flow starts with a very subsonic and if you keep on decreasing the pressure exit pressure then at one instant the mach number becomes completely uh, sonic at the throat but nozzle is completely flow inside the nozzle is completely subsonic so this particular pressure ratio we have to calculate and we say it's a minimum pressure ratio or we say this pressure ratio pe3 we are going to calculate 
Now instead of PE3 we simply say P what pressure PE we require for this situation and the flow is completely subsonic. And here we say the reservoir pressure P0 is 20 bar and the Mach number is equal to 2.5 that is a design Mach number. So, for this design Mach number is 2.5 supply pressure is 20 bar. Now, had this had this Mach number would have been there. So, if you say m is equal to 2.5 we would have landed the area ratio by a star as if you look at this uh, table uh, this is called area isentropic table. And this, this is available in the book under John D. Anderson. So, for this Mach number 2.5 we can say the area ratio is 2.637 and corresponding to this area ratio corresponding to this area ratio or close or a closure value of uh, 2.7 we can say a by a star close to 2.708 in this number and here both are close value and this will give you a Mach number which is subsonic value subsonic value is m is equal to 0.22. So, in other words what I am saying for one particular area ratio which is close to 2.7 we have two different Mach numbers m is equal to 2.5 which refers to a sub supersonic value m refers to 0.22 which refers to a subsonic value. Our question was asked what is the minimum back pressure. So, minimum back pressure we should start with a value which corresponds to Mach number of 0.22 and for this Mach number of 0.22 corresponding P naught by P e ratio would be 1.034 and which is here and, and here your supply pressure P naught is given 20 bar. So, P e should be 20 by 1.034. So, that means this value is be will be 19.3 bar. So, means if your exit pressure is 19.3 bar we can at least ensure that the flow will be sonic phonic at the throat, but flow will be choked, but the entire flow will be completely subsonic that is at Mach number of 0.22. The next question is that this is of course, same nature of the question that we have a converging diverging nozzle which is to be operated uh, at Mach 2.5 nozzle supply pressure is 20 bar. So, we have to calculate the following that means, uh, same question we are repeating here, but with a different philosophy. First thing we have to calculate range of back pressure for which normal shock will appear in the nozzle. So, if you look at this particular case A first case, so is we, we can say the normal shock will appear in the nozzle. So, normal shock if you have to appear we can say that we can choose any location where normal shock can happen and here the nozzle supply pressure P naught is still 20 bar and this Mach number is 2.5. And if at all there is a normal shock, we can denote two conditions 1 and 2, which is uh, before and after this shock. And the conditions may be M1, M2, we can say P1 and P01, and P01 will be same as 20 bar, and here we can say. P2, P02. 
this refers to corresponding to this Mach number m2. Okay. So, let us calculate if at all there will be normal shock correspond to this supersonic value, what are the things, uh, what are the values we are going to obtain. So, for the solution A, we have to refer normal shock table. So, this normal shock table is here. Okay. So, in this normal shock table, we have to look for 2.5 Mach number, that is the first one. So, M1 is equal to here you have to say 2.5. So, this will imply to us with respect to this particular figure P2 by P1 is 7.125 and P B this back pressure. So, this this P 2 is nothing but P B back pressure is 7.125 and again for isentropic table that is for M 1 is equal to 2.5 we can say P not 1 by P 1 is P not by P 1 will be 17.09. So, we already know P not 1 as 20 bar. So, this will give you P 1 as 1.17 bar. So, when we have when we know this then from this relation we can get P B is 7.12 times P 1, this becomes 8.33 bar. So, basically speaking that if your P B back pressure is 8.33 bar, the normal shock will appear. Okay. So, any value which is higher than this your P B is greater than or equal to 8.33 bar, the normal shock will appear in the nozzle. Second case, range of back pressure for a supersonic flow in the exit plane. So, for a second case, we can say we have 20 bar P naught m is equal to 2.5 we say this nozzle is the uh, normal shock is at exit. So, when the, this and this normal when the normal shock is at the exit that then we can recall from our data here M 1 is equal to 2.5 which will imply P B by P 1 is 7.125. So, if our condition is 1.17 that is so this will give you p1 as 1.17 bar which can be calculated here so if your back pressure is higher than 1.17 but lower than 8.33 then under these conditions we can say that we will have normal shock at exit plane. Okay. And third case, we say it is a perfectly expanded nozzle, that means nozzle is shock free. So, we say P naught is 20 bar. So, you have m is equal to 2.5. So, it is a shock free nozzle. So, shock free nozzle means we have to rely on this supersonic number. So, we say this supersonic number tells that your P e for m 1 is equal to 2.5 and P naught 1 is equal to 20 bar. This will say 
P 1 is equal to 1.17 bar. Now, if your exit pressure is less than 1.17 bar, so this will imply is shock free nozzle. And this particular case we say perfectly expanded nozzle. Okay. So, this picture will give you a very clear information. So, another problem of similar nature we have to see that we have a convergent divergent nozzle, but this problem is of something of different kind. So, let us see what this question was asked and what are the things we, we are expected to know. So, a question is given the convergent divergent nozzle has a exit to throat ratio is 3. Normal shock appears inside the diverging portion at a location where local area ratio is 2. So, first thing is that we have to see that there is a nozzle and where the exit to throat that means, if you have we put this as the exit and this particular things we, we do not know the Mach number, we put this as a throat. The question was given that exit to throat ratio is 3 and of course, the flow is partly supersonic because divergent portion there is some portion in the divergent section there is supersonic flow is prevailing. So, there is a location and at which the that means, a local area ratio a by a t was 2. So, at that particular location this normal shock appears. So, to solve this problem first we have to start with this location. Now, for a by a t and if there is a normal shock we can assume the flow conditions to be P naught 1, P 1, M 1, P naught 2, P 2, M 2. So, here this particular location I can say as A 1 by A t or A 2 by A t because this shock is very thin thickness shock wave is thin. So, both uh, approximations can also hold good here. So, first we will try to see that if we say for this situation if I assume A 1 by A star is equal to 2 and corresponding to this isentropic table if you refer and we have to refer a value for this 2 and we have to refer a supersonic value this particular number. So, this this will imply m is equal to or m 1 is equal to 2.2 basically we are finding the conditions in this region. Okay. Now, for this m 1 is equal to 2.2 normal shock table which is here. So, for the 2.2 the last one we can take m 1 is equal to 2.2 we can say your m 2 would be 0 0.5471. So, you know the region m 2 region and we can say uh, p naught 2 by p naught 1 as 0 0.6281 p naught 2 by p naught 1. Then 
then we have to calculate with respect to uh, uh, then we have to calculate for m2 is equal to and you have to calculate p02 so for p02 we require m2 then for m2 is equal to 0 0.5471 so isentropic table will give you 0 0.5471 5.71 let us take this 0 0.54 so uh, this will give you a2 by a2 star is equal to 1.27 and of course p02 by p2 is 0 0.12 one nine. Okay. Now, we will go to our problem, we say that exit to threat area is 3. So, we now need to calculate what is the exit to pressure. So, uh, this we can calculate once we know A e by A star. A e star. So, A e by A e star we can write as A e by A 2 into A e by A t into A t by A 2 into A 2 by A e star. So, all this ratio is given this value is 3 this is 1 by 2 already it is given as 2, so it is 1 by 2 and this one we calculated as 1.27. So, this number becomes A e by A e star is 1.905. So, for this area ratio we can get the value m e because the flow here you have to look for the subsonic region. So, m 2 is subsonic here. So, m e at the exit for this area ratio 1.905 which is close to this value. So, you can say m e is 0.32. So, we say exit Mach number is uh, 0.32. And for this exit Mach number, you have to calculate what is P e by P naught. That is nothing but P e by P naught e into P naught e by P naught 2 into P naught 2 by P naught 1 into P naught 1 by P naught. Okay. So, here this value is 1.074, this is 1, this is also 0 0.6281. into this is 1. So, finally, if you calculate this value is be 0.585. So, exit to reservoir pressure is 0 0.585 and this corresponds to m e is equal to 0 0.32. Okay. So, this, this is a very uh, tricky questions I can say, but we have to understand in a very different way that what specifically uh, you are given a task to calculate. Okay. With this I conclude this talk for today. Thank you for your attention.